Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. The move that's making the move up on the iTunes charts. I'm Lance Armstrong, joined by J.B. Hager, George Hincapie. I'm actually half a Lance Armstrong today. We're going to get into that. I've, I've got some problems, and I want to spend most of the show talking about my problems. One thing that was not a problem was my sleep last night. This show presented to you by Aura Ring. Sleep score, excellent last night, despite my problems. Readiness score, also excellent. So after a hard ride with Mr. Hincapie, uh, body just clearly recovered. This device, the smartest uh, health and wellness tracker that I've ever come across, uh, full disclosures over at Next Ventures, we are backers of this company, um, gives me my readiness score, my activity score, my sleep score, teamed up with the NBA, the WNBA, uh, got some riders in the tour rocking the ring. Um, George, I, you know, you're, are you still sleeping bad? I'm getting better, actually. I, w- I woke up at uh, six fifteen this morning, which is a, uh, you know, a lot better than you're getting the, there. The, the last you're, few days, you're getting there. Well, uh, head on over to AuraRing dot com. There's our flow code. Check that out. That's kind of cool. Um, and and join us and send us your stuff. Send us your data. See how you guys are stacking up. Um, but I, again, I'm really looking forward to talking about my problems. We are uh, talking about stage five. Stage five, gap two, priva. Oh, priva. I think priva. we should have Alain here one day. We'll do a live, we can do a live. Uh, yeah, well, he can come in. Like, we'll pick one of the trickiest days. He's, he's kind of fancy. He travels around a lot, so we'll see if he's an Aspen. But um, this damn fly on the set, <laughs> it's going to kill me. <laughs> uh, hey, today's show also brought to you by Hyper Ice. Now, this is a brand, I, I've, been, I've been tracking this brand. Uh, for a long time and actually been a, a, a customer of theirs for years. Um, this stuff right here, right? Handheld massage devices, vibrating foam rollers, and I want to get into my problem in a second. Thermal tech, Norma tech compression systems, quick step, jumbo visma, lotto sudol, all using it in the tour. Uh, $50 off some of these percussion devices, $300 off all the Norma tech packages. Head on over to Hyper Ice. That's H Y P E R I C E dot com. Use the code hype the move for ten percent off. Check this out though. So, and I just don't know what happened. There's our flow code, by the way. So, something. I've got a neck problem, and it it was the weirdest thing. I know George. I had a I, I, my neck started hurting yesterday, like the left side of my neck, and then I went out and I played nine last night with Sheriff, just doing a little gambling. We did a lot of gambling, a little golfing. And I came home, and the, my right side, I couldn't, I woke up this morning, I couldn't get out of bed. I have been, I've been doing two things. And George, you watched, and we put some of this on socials. I've been hyper icing like crazy, and I've been power dying like crazy. We'll get into that in a sec. But George, you have a theory on what happened to my neck? Do you have like a, any violin music we can play? <laughs> the sad now? violin. We'll hear this. I mean, we're five days in. I, you can't hey. be getting hurt five days into the Tour de France. We need. We need you. We need you at full health. There's, in, you know, whenever you get hurt, there's always something. You, there, there, it just feels like there's some moment where you're like, ooh, I felt it. I didn't feel anything. I, I have no, I can't point to anything. There was nothing. I'm worried about you. I do have my theory, though, is why your neck hurts. I don't know if you guys caught yesterday. Oh, there we go. Is that the violin? Or? I'll get it. We'll get it going. We'll play it after my theory. Okay. What's your theory? My theory is... I don't know if you got you guys caught us uh, some of our posts on Instagram last night with the old man trying to follow me down the mountain. Uh, he was struggling. He was very tense, very tight. I could see him just holding on to those handlebars for dear life. I believe that's how you got the kink necked. That could. Neck. That's not a bad theory. Probably a better theory is that on all the climbs, I was kicking your ass. <laughs> Go on. This is yeah. We just this is talk just, over this. Just wait till I get to my apology to an entire country of slovenia <laughs> you really want to play this music but this is oh my god but I, I actually think it was as i was totally throttling your ass on the climbs i kept looking back and, and you know you were suffering like a like a junkyard dog and i was just looking for you and i perhaps looked too many times that's my theory anyways <laughs> all right that's you know what guys i will leave <laughs> well, fortunately, we do have the hyper ice, and we have all and, and every fortu- tool we and, need to get their neck back and on track. Fortunately, we have swivel chairs, so I, I can just go like this. <laughs> AJB, and I can come back. 
Uh, anyways, no, this device is brilliant. As I said, I, I was a, I've been a long time fan of this company, Hyperize. Head on over to hyperize.com. Uh, last one here for a sec, and another company I just love. You guys know this, right? The Rokas, and and the and just in in terms of uh, every year, there's kind of a reader update. You know, I started when I was at some point in life. You're like, oh shit, I cannot read this paper, and then you get you some one two fives, and then a few years ago went to one fives. I'm now, I'm now up to two point I've, I've 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 entered the twos on on the reader game. Um, this company founded by badass athletes, four badass athletes, bunch of riders in the tour based out of Austin, Texas, our hometown, um, bunch of teams in the tour, team Sunweb. You got me It's Superman. I mean, damn Superman wears them. That's pretty good. Uh, team rally here domestically. And also Justin Williams, who George, I think you've been threatening to have on the show to break down some of these sprint stages. Not only threatening, but I did talk to Justin the other day and he's, uh, ready and willing to be on the show. So we just got to find the perfect sprint stage. Uh, to get him on because I'd love be. to have him break it down for us. And he's a big, so he's the he's the guy they use to launch the Matador. Uh, I didn't know this until uh, the other day. These are completely customizable, so you can go in and create your own your own custom design and and uh, make it how you want. Head on over to Roca. Can they .com. can they add one of those like rear view mirrors on on one of those for you so you don't have to hurt your neck when you're looking back at me? It's probably a good idea. <laughs> All right, we can right? try that. We can right? try that. All right, let's talk about uh, George. You have should we? How do you want me to to, to go? I know you're 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 really uh, organized about these things, and you want to go in order. But can I just get? Um, I feel really bad about the whole Slovenia thing. I actually thought I was. Um, f- first of all, let me just say one thing. Okay, this this is um, uh, it, this is Hollywood, right? So it's 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 uh, it's it's show business, right? So it's not. It's sometimes it's just we're just making this up. I wasn't. I love Slovenia. I don't even know. I still don't know where it is. Uh, but I want to first and foremost give a really special shout out to Yanni Brakovic, who was on our team forever. And look at this. Look at what he or somebody put up. <laughs> did he put that up? Armstrong. Did we ever race with Slovenians? Yeah. Brakovic. Dude, you really <laughs> forgot I worked my ass off for you. So yeah, Yanni we, and and, and I, I don't know. If, I think Yanni listens, but uh, this he was a badass. He, he was, he was, was and by the way, us. you know, he's about 120 pounds and could do it all. He could climb, he could TT. Uh, he was a super talent and, and a great teammate and a cool teammate. This is a fun guy. I remember, I remember one year we were training camp and he went down and bought the latest and greatest Ford Mustang. I said, what are you going to do with that? He says, well, I'm going to ship it back to Slovenia. Oh, that would be cool to have a Mustang. So he's rolling yeah. around like, like you think he ain't the man. I wonder if he still has it. I don't know. We all failed mil- miserably on that one. We love Yanni. Yanni, sorry about that, and we well, miss you. <laughs> well, I screwed up, too, and because Johan and I had There's him. There Slovenia. We had him on last year. So this is, that's, where, that's where Slovenia is. So it's under Austria. I know where Austria is, so I should be. Okay, and it's by Croatia. I know where that is, too. Well, All right, listen, this is and, – and this – that's amazing. And then we had the girl – who would always send us pronunciations while she was laying in bed, and I still – wait she, a second. She sent a new one. Are you kidding me right now? She oh sent God. a new one. <laughs> Look at this. Hang on. She's out of bed. Hi, Mr. Armstrong. It's me again, the girl from the bed. I had to get up because I noticed that you struggle with geography. So a quick geography 101. Where is Slovenia? Well, it's right next to Italy in Central Europe, and it's a semi-unimportant country. Except when it comes to cycling. Now let's focus on world domination by Slovenian cyclists, shall we? Oh, oh wait, wait. my! Do you see the little eyebrow thing Burn at the notice. end? Wow! I mean, <laughs> that was. And we don't. Do we even know this lady? We, we shouldn't say her name on here, but I. She is cool. I'm, I'm going to, I don't even, I'm sort of speechless. And I was, and I was, we referenced her a couple of times. I didn't know if she was listening, but. We could say her first name. What is her first name? Nusha. Or, <laughs> and it's N-U-S-A, but it has an accent mark over the S. Nusa. So, Nusa. Oh, thank you, Nusa. Nusa. That we, was awesome. we love you. Thank you. And, <laughs> and you're right. Uh, we can focus on Serbian dominant world domination. Slo- like Serbian. Slo- oh Slo- no! Slo- here we go again. <laughs> you just undid all that. This you is really, on. You really are <laughs> off today. Should we? What just, is, is? Can I, guys? Should, do you should, mind if I just go home and yeah, take a nap? Say, should JB and I just take over? Uh, I suck. 
<laughs> By the way, where's Serbia? Is that has to be near <laughs> no, Serbia? No, no, don't even. Can we talk about uh, the stage five? Let's talk about France? it. Hey, you know what? I will add one more thing to it that may have thrown New, you so off. So that was, guys. By the way, that was I told you this is Hollywood. That was a joke. <laughs> I know we're talking about Slovenia, okay, and not Croatia and not Serbia. I know we're talking about a little bit of defense for you. It wasn't Slovenia until 1991, so you might have been thinking of you. You probably rode with some Yugoslavians yeah. in the early days. I don't know. That maybe later became Slovenians. 1991. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's talk about stage five. Can I, and I, because I do, and George, I'm going to let you lead because I know you yeah. have a, a certain way you like to go about this. No, so turning on the TV this morning, no breakaway in stage, fifth stage of the Tour de France is uh, super strange to see. And I kind of reached out to some of my sources and Apparently, nobody's letting anybody get more than two minutes in a breakaway. So the motivation to be in a breakaway is a lot less. They're not letting big, group, big groups go, and they aren't letting the groups that go get more than two minutes. So the chances of a breakaway actually making, making it when the general you know, sort of strategy of the peloton is no big breakaways, no big time gaps, uh, is minimizing the motivation for these guys to get in a breakaway. So you rarely ever see stage five of the Tour de France on a relatively rolling day without a breakaway is that because of this whole theory that bobby julik had that that there are a lot of these guys that think that the tour might be called off after nine or ten days and so yeah i mean if if i thought that might happen i wouldn't let some group get a you know 10 a group you know a panacookins get 10 minutes and all of a sudden you can't reel it back before and all of a sudden boom they call it off you think that's playing a factor um i hope not i mean we aren't we we're hearing better news in, t in that in terms of the the tour making it to paris and yep um, getting out of Nice was a big, big deal for them. So um, let's hope that they're not even thinking about that now. But perhaps that did have some, uh, played some effect in the breakaways early on. And, you know, not that I'm a man of many sources, but one of my sources who's extremely reliable, again, to remind you all, Nice, so back up. So France uh, has these color coded zones for COVID, uh, red being, uh, you know, the, the places that are being the hardest hit. Nice is, is and the south of France right there, the Cote d'Azur is in the red zone. So my source uh, said that they made it out and, and passed all the protocols. And so uh, looking good that they'll, you know, they're, I, I, and I have to go look, I don't know that we're going to enter into any more red zones, so to speak, maybe Paris, uh, but that's obviously at the end. So fingers crossed, these guys keep going. Absolutely. But the thing I do want, I mean, when we talk about stage five, and I believe I did pick Walt Van Aert, I know there's some questions and maybe some controversy around did I pick him or did George just tell me to pick him or let me pick him or let me have him or whatever you said? No, there's no controversy. That is the fact. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. And we have footage of it that huh. I gave you that pick. Well, anyways. So I get the assist. <laughs> you get the assist, so yeah. I get half a point. Um, there we go. There we go. Wait. Well, uh, does, yes, he's on a roll. Thank you Wait a minute. Much, who did, who's, who put, when did we put up this poll? <laughs> Why don't – and look at the light, the lampshade back there, So George. I get it. it it's, what is going on it's, over at the Armstrong house? It's not even an assist. I get it. 83%. My peeps have spoken. I'm 3-0 three, I'm three and oh right now. Look at me. I don't even look good today. I look, I look bad. I look like I've had a bad night, which I did. Not according, not according to my sleep dad. But, um, but this, this guy, Wout Van Aert, uh, and we've talked a lot about him, to see him just – making everybody suffer on the climb yesterday and then to come back and win a field sprint today what can this guy not do i, I there there are people in the back of their minds going huh because he can time trial too i think we should definitely uh focus a little bit on wild van out uh, as we get to there um later on in the show because i do want to address a couple more issues like you mentioned last night you got a little early look on the world championships happening yeah uh, which is a big deal they they were on the edge of being canceled they were canceled in switzerland and now they're moving to Imola, Italy, and it's going to be super exciting. The week after the Tour de France, so, I mean, it's highly wow. likely that one of the winners or one of the guys that are up on top steps of the podiums can win the World Championships a week later. Uh, it's 5,000 meters of climbing, 240-something kilometers, oh so it's going to be an incredible. 5,000, that's, guys, that's, uh, boy, do the math. 5,000 six, meters. That's 16,500 feet yeah, of vert. So so even even the guys right now at the Tour de France, they now have something else to think about. It's not only the Tour de France, which it should be, but some of these uh, top GC guys have a real shot at winning the World Championships just because of today's announcement. Mm. I'm curious what you guys think about, I mean, we all know Wout Van Aert is an exception to a lot of rules, but 
having dual goals, the overall protecting Roglic and then going for wins like this. He good did, or he, bad idea? He did it by himself. <laughs> he, he was I mean they had the team in Ineos launched this crosswind attack that that you know uh, split up parts of the peloton. There were echelons starting to form. Uh, Jumbo Visma came with their train on the other side, so they had to be. Um, it almost looks like a sprint lead out, but they were just protecting Roglic and Dumoulin from the wind. But when it came down to the sprint, this this wild Van Art just found his way. Yeah, I mean, there was a, a lot of excitement going on with that potential crosswind split when Ineos went to the front. It was good to see them get together and, and do an aggressive move there, but there was absolutely zero panic from the Jumbo Visma squad. They were about 30 40 guys back which is uh, a bit too far back in a dangerous situation like that but they were together which as we all know back in the day that's the one thing that johan said maybe a million times a day was stay together and stay in the front stay so as long front, as you're yeah. together and crosswinds happen you should typically I, I even mentioned to lance like i'd be there right now bringing them back to the front in that situation yes you would yep absolutely uh, and so i agree with you on you that. saw young on there and i wouldn't be surprised if wout was one of the guys that brought uh, primos back up to the front and once he's back in the front, then Wow just got his own card to play and get and stayed there. You can see he was on his own. My boy GVA was on his own a bit too much as well, and um, unfortunately he did not win today. And he actually reached out today and apologized for not winning. But <laughs> you know, the, and that's this, good. The, you know, we get pissed about these yeah, things no. when you, when you call, predict somebody and they don't even uh, win. I mean, that's that's a serious offense. But I think the the finish was a bit deceiving. It wasn't as steep as we all thought. I think even Greg thought it was a bit steeper. So it was. It was definitely more of a, a sprinter stage, but even if it's steeper with the power that Wout Ben Arnhardt today, he probably would have won anyway. I'll tell you what it was, is, and we, we noticed this, and it, we were like, whoa, it was narrow. Did you see those bears? I mean, the last K or two was, that looked like a lane. They had those barriers tucked yeah. in there super tight, so it must have been. I mean, you can't have it that tight if it's if it's truly flat and fast. But And nowadays, every team, every rider knows how narrow it is. They're, all the directors are telling them, at this kilometer, it's going to get this narrow. You better be at the front. Uh, which makes it even more stressful. The stage was relatively easy stage. So as I said before in the early stages, when it's an easy stage, it makes it for a much more stressful final because everybody's fresh, everybody thinks they can get a result, and everybody's fighting for that those first positions in the peloton. Well, well, we haven't even gotten to the the really big breaking news where yeah. all of our jaws hit the floor, and that's what happened to <laughs> Philippe today. Yeah, so Julian Philippe is out of yellow, not because he had a mechanical or got dropped or – no – he, I mean, this is just, I can't believe that somebody would actually take a water bottle. He took a water bottle within the last 20 kilometers, which I didn't know. Maybe, I'm, uh, maybe I've been asleep, but they docked him 20 seconds and 200 Swiss francs. I mean, or 15 so he, uh, seconds. No, 20 seconds. I'll tell you what, the country seconds. of France has to be an uproar right now. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean th let's just, that's bullshit. I, 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 that's crazy. He took it from the side of the road. Can which we pull a picture up? I think we have a picture of it. Guys, Johan sent us a picture. Yeah, but anyway, it was a he. He grabbed the bottle from one of the 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 workers on the team side of the road. Absolutely no danger at all, no risk. Uh, it's it's un it's unreal that they uh, pulled you know gave him a twenty second penalty. It's just super sad to see ketones. And I'm sure um no not twenty k to go. That's like twenty minutes to go, thirty minutes to go. I'm sure um, Matt, Matt. Well, I know Matt. Why it's not his his. Uh, most ideal way to get the jersey, but they, you know, Adam Yates is in the yellow now. They have the jersey and they can protect the lead tomorrow. It's going to be, you'll see uh, Mitchell and Scott at the front all day tomorrow. So when I see decisions like this, I always worry because the way, the way, you know, there's always a, a, a jury, they call it a jury of commissars at, at, at any professional bike race. Uh, then there's a president of the jury. You know, the jury is really important. Those are the people that enforce. So here's a photo of, of him taking the bottle from uh, one of the team staff. You always look at the, the, the jury and, and see where they're from. And then you look at the president. So the, the president is, is a Belgian. Uh, then you've got uh, a Spanish commissar, a French commissar, actually two French commissars and an Italian, right? So it's a committee. So they would have looked at this and said, do we enforce uh, this? But... Clearly, the Belgian um, dropped the, dropped the hammer on Mr. Alaphilippe. Wow. Yeah, no, it's it's clear no rider would want to take the jersey like that. In fact, I do remember another episode. Um, it was early two thousands when uh, I, th I believe Zabriskie crashed in the team time trial, and you did not want to wear the yellow jersey the next day, and they made you wear it. Otherwise, they would have uh, 
gave you a time penalty. Mm. That was that was more from uh, Jean Marie LeBlanc, but yeah, you know he he ruled with an iron fist, and if he said jump, you said how high. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that that's that that could, I mean for him too, twenty seconds is is not insignificant. And, I mean, are they just trying to? Uh, set him a, an example of look we're sticking to to rules here you know because the, the team car thing has been more active not letting riders Guys work up through the motor pace back up yeah look i i think if they're going to have rules like this it, it it and you you have to if you're going to enforce them once you have to enforce them all the times whether it's motor pacing up after a mechanical or a crash or whether it's grabbing a bottle or 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 whatever it is it just again sometimes the sport is just wildly inconsistent which just lacks credibility when it comes to um, laying it down like that. So whatever. I mean, it is what it is, and they're not obviously not going to go back on it. I'm sure he is livid. He's got to be livid. Got to be livid. I would be livid. So what can you I mean, do? You can I, only well, take – you could take a bottle from a teammate, yeah? You, you could take a bottle from a teammate. That's about you could it. You totally take a bottle from a teammate. In okay. fact, yeah. you couldn't go back to the car and take a bottle. You – you would never – I mean, on the other side of the argument, which I'm super disappointed to see Philippe lose the jersey like that. I don't think it's right. But at the other side of the argument, you would never even have thought about grabbing a bottle or even a feedback when you were racing the Tour de France. Your teammates would grab them for you. Yeah, I don't even remember the last time I grabbed a bottle, except for yesterday when I actually carried a water <laughs> bottle for you. This is true. Because your, your mountain bike only has one bottle cage. And so I said, George, because I wore a, a hydration pack, I said, I, I'm happy to carry your other bottle for you. <laughs> and I, I still, it. so not only was I carrying a good three, four pounds on my back, plus uh, the two pounds that is your large bottle, and I was still dropping your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I clearly paid for it because I feel like I'm 95 years old today. One thing that will be interesting is that we we need to see what, and wait uh, what Patrick Lefebvre's comments are going to be. I'm sure he's not going to hold back at all. Never and, does. Uh, they're going to be super pissed off about today's decision. Never does. And, and by the way, Patrick, and we're talking about a Belgian team. Again, I'm going back to the the, the head of the <laughs> head of the jury is a Belgian. I'm sure that's going to be a nice. I would love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. Yeah. Hot for Doma Klotzak. <laughs> So there, there I mean, those there are all is, bad words in Flemish. There's your new GC. Yeah, Adam Yates in yellow, and our man Primus Roglic in second. No doubt, he's in the perfect position. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get the yellow tomorrow. It's a super hard stage, and you saw yesterday he basically just rode everybody off of his wheel. So um, I think we'll see Mitchelton Scott controlling the race, and then of course Yumbo taking over in that last climb and setting a really hard pace. Can I do a little bit of business before we? Yep. Talk about tomorrow. Yep. Today's show also brought to you by LMNT. I talked about this yesterday, and, and this is my go-to for hydration. I, I personally think, uh, and George, you can back me up here, I think hydration is so essential when it comes to uh, working out like we do. Uh, I, and, and again, I live a life where I get up and I drink coffee, and then I go work out, and then maybe a glass of wine or two at night. It's just constantly being dehydrated. And so it's really tough to stay on top of hydration. Uh, water doesn't, if you just go drink a bunch of water all day long, that isn't hydrating you, right? You may go to the bathroom, be clear, but, um, there's a proper way to hydrate. And, and I've tested so many of these products, LMNT, and, and I got no skin in this game, by the way. Uh, this is my go-to. Uh, I'm as George featured on his Instagram yesterday, I was sweating like a pig and, uh, but I'm, I'm a sweater. I say that every day, but uh, LMNT has been the one, um, that I've found that really replaces all these things that I'm losing when I'm out exercising, uh, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, uh, special partners with the Navy SEAL teams, uh, USA Weightlifting. Uh, head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move. There's our flow code. Uh, I think there's three or four different flavors. My go-to is the orange. I, I do the orange salt. And, and they have the money-back guarantee. And, and as they say, if you don't like it, Give it to one of your salty friends. I needed them. I love that tagline. I needed them this summer in South Carolina. We have some serious humidity and heat there, so next summer I'm going to have to load up on that stuff. The other cool thing is they send me a ton of products, so I, I, I just got team over at LMN Team. I have a garage full now, so just maybe pause on. But what <laughs> I've been doing is handing it out to people that come through town and are going back home, whether they're going back to Tucson or Texas or whatever. I say, just try this out. Let me know how it goes. Every single person calls me like, dude, this is a game changer. So last one for the day uh, and, and probably 
one of the most important today based on the fact that I feel like I'm 95 power dot. Uh, this has been, and we put it up on socials today and I'm trying to, I was trying to power dot the heck out of my neck as well as hypervolt it. Um, this is the most, I mean, when, when, when we saw this product over at next ventures, we knew that, that it was a game changer, the size of a double cheeseburger, throw it in your backpack, throw it in your car, throw it on the plane, t- watch movies at home with this revolutionary e-stim device on i mean i was literally watching the stage this morning with it on my neck just trying to get to a place where i could come over here and apologize to an entire country of slovenia uh this is the only slovenia this is the only reason i was able to apologize to you guys today uh used by top athletes in in the sport of cycling um national football league major league baseball pga 30-day money back guarantee if you don't like it send it back the other great thing is this great company supports great causes feeding san diego feeding america and these trying times, uh, awesome gesture on their part. Uh, they donate 40 meals for every PowerDot Duo purchase. So head on over to PowerDot.com slash the move. And the buy code is the move. And thank you guys for allowing me to be here today after using this. <laughs> and apologize to an entire country. All right. Let's talk about tomorrow. I did want to point out one, a few more things about today's stage. Was Not done. For what looked like a relatively boring stage. It was very boring. Um, <laughs> but I did want to point out before that last category four climb and you saw the Peloton kind of fanned out with four or five teams taking up the whole road. This may look easy on TV, but this is one of the most stressful situations in all of pro cycling because they're hauling ass down this road. All the leaders need to be in front. They know there's wind coming. They know there's danger coming. And the directors are yelling that yelling at them in their ears to stay at the front, keep their guy out of trouble. The sprinter teams are trying to do the same thing. So it's complete chaos. Even though on TV it looks like they're just riding along the road, you know, not doing anything dangerous on a straight road. It's Trust me, it's very, very dangerous, very stressful, and uh, very high risk. I mean, you can lose it all right there with one little mistake, one one rub of the wheel, your Tour de France is over. So those those particular moments, while I'm watching on the TV, I remember quite vividly are some of the most stressful situations in all of pro cycling you can just hear it in your ear oh yeah the <laughs> wind the, the carbon <laughs> wheels the, your director yelling at you your teammates yelling at you lands yelling at me i mean i get ptsd watching this shit wow you know what is so fun are you kidding me right now That's are you, you burn yeah, i know he woke up he woke up ready to rock and roll uh, and hey, I woke we're up. five days in baby i'm starting to get i'm starting to get it's acclimated this, let's go vamos the, one of the nicest most easy going guys did, did you hear his blood start to boil just Telling reliving you, I, I watched this shit. It gets me all fired I, up i feel like i should take a day off on the bike today i don't i don't know that i want to cross this man <laughs> And, and I think we were talking, too, earlier, uh, just to the members when we were live. I, I don't think it was during the real show. But I, it, what do you all think? Um, do, could I put up a beard poll? Now, if you're just listening, <laughs> oh, you boy. can't really see. But if you're oh, watching boy. on one of the video formats, you start. could we zoom in on, on this good-looking man, meaning, meaning me right here? Um, I'm starting. Okay, now you see that. I'm starting to get a little bit. I know it's gray or, or silver. Um, Tiff, can we throw up a poll about the beard? Should I just? How long did it take you to get to that? This point? is a this that, is about a week. It's a little, Ooh, it's a little, wow. little patchy, bro. A little patchy. No, this is about a week, and and but if I could go another two two plus weeks, it, it might start hmm. to look like a beard. They call that a football mustache. Did you know that? Eleven on each side. We'll do a poll. I think the poll for <laughs> L.A. having a beard or not should should be. It's probably going to be pretty should low. Should be up. <laughs> yeah, we can we can do that. It's. Uh, it's not popular in my household. I know that. So I know where they're voting. Last thing I want to point out about today's stage is our boy Sepp Kuz crashed. We mm. hope that he's okay. He's riding and he's having an incredible season. Uh, one of the best, if not the best climber in the Tour de France, American guy from Durango, Colorado. So we hope he's doing well after his crash today. We got a message on uh, YouTube from his brother. Oh, that's He okay. said, also, Sepp has Slovenian roots. Oh, no. Whoa. Uh, how about that? Love hearing you guys talk about my little bro. That's from Tim Coos. That's cool. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Give and us some I, inside scoop on him. Uh, you know, if your brother would. He know did. It. He just told us he's from Slovenia. <laughs> right. We're huge fans of Sepp. I mean, his rise in cycling uh, has been so quick and so impressive that uh, I'm just so excited to see how far he will go. Well, I tell you what else is impressive is they've interviewed him a couple times at the finish after he's done these, you know, th- these days where he's totally committed to the team and. And just you know, uh, super generous. I mean, he's a team guy, right? And so his, but his interviews at the finish line, uh, pure class, 
totally humble. Yep. You know, you you watch that and you're like, all right, you know, if you if you were running a team, um, you, you think to yourself, this is a guy I want on my team, right? This is this is he's a team guy. By the way, for now, because this guy, you watch, you mark my words, he's going to develop into a GC contender. But for now, he realizes that he's got two great leaders and he's a younger guy and he's just gonna he's gonna bust his ass for them. Say all the right things, and he'll get his moment. And what better way to learn from those guys? Oh, I my mean, gosh. And in the Dauphiné, when uh, Roglic pulled out. Because we he, told him to. And then uh, <laughs> Koos won the next day. That's right. Hey, just uh, – and then let's just – before we get out of here, and I go um, hypervolt and power dot and, and ice and take a nap. Um, the the finish tomorrow – I you know, I just I just want to be really candid about this. I I just don't love it. I would love it if this – if you look at the profile – I would just love it if it ended right here. I just think any time, because that's a hard climb. You've got some sections of uh, 11%, 10.9%. And then, but when any time you, in the mind of the rider, when you know there's a downhill and then sort of a false flat back, it just neutralizes the race, I think. Whereas as opposed to stopping and finishing the race right there, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I I think it, again, discourages riders from attacking on those tough sections if they know i mean then you've still got eh, they would still have 15k to go to the finish oh i wouldn't mind chiming in on this i'd love for you to this is a very tough final i mean two category three climbs leading into the category one climb um and we saw what happened yesterday there was what 25 guys left in that front group this is going to be carnage i mean if a, a team like yumbo wants to go to the front and make it hard um that'll they'll be 10, 15 guys over the top of that last category one. And maybe some guys can come back in the downhill, maybe not, but they're going to be in the red zone. And that finish is going to be, you know, very difficult. And I got to, I got to, I'm, not, I'm going to have to go with Primos again. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think that's a good pick. Look, he's, uh, I just don't want him to, um, there's no sense in, in uh, being too aggressive here in terms of, I mean, I think back to my day and just, I was always like, win, win, win. There were plenty of days you're like, just, just back off just a little. Let somebody else win. Be be the you know sort of be the godfather here. Um, but look, he's probably wired um, a different way, and he's he's a winner. Um, on that last profile there, on the last uh, chart we just showed, so uh, we pulled that off of the Velo News uh, site. Uh, head on over there to their thing. That's our new media partner here at the Move. Uh, get on over there and get your Velo News pass, your Active Pass. What a platform! They got like twenty or twenty-five or thirty uh, media platforms all under one roof. So. Uh, they're doing a great job. This, this, uh, we got two Bibles here. Well, we, not like Bibles, but like two like race books. Uh, their their tour preview is pretty pretty badass. So you got to. Uh, I figure you would probably want to take Yates to defend Yellow. That's I just, gonna be I, that's I, gonna I, be I a show. I don't I, think, I think this it's is, possible. I, I think this. Uh, I think uh, Roglic uh, too good. Uh, um, I just think it's gonna be uneventful. Yeah. I think the climb before is hard. But if if the guys know, look, they have uh, they have thirteen kilometers to the finish from that that hard climb. That's too far. I are, just, you not, are you I, not seeing the the profile? Like it goes back uphill. I know, but it goes climb. back uphill at four percent. Yeah, four percent. We're talking. We're a bit at altitude. We're we've just done three big climbs. It's not like just hitting a four percent climb, uh, just running into it and doing it. Like look at what comes before. That's gonna play a big role well you can have your opinion and i will have mine and we will see tomorrow yes and i will feel a lot better tomorrow i promise you and i i will forever be indebted to the slovenians for forgiving me and even the serbians for saying their name wrong um and the croatians and the czechs and the italian anyways so are you gonna make a pick you're injured we're giving you a little a uh, little leeway today oh my pick for tomorrow hmm uh, I want George to go first. I I went. I'm, I'm, picked, I picked Primos. I'll give you another you pick he, if you want. Because <laughs> I have a couple in mind that I think could Pogachar play a big factor. You know, here here's I'll make a pick. And I'm and I, now that I think about this, it's 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 an obvious pick. Because he must be some kind of pissed off oh, right now. Yeah, right? Oh. that's what I was going to say. And, and and if you're if if it were me and I was that mad and I had the legs to do it. I'd go get my 20 seconds back, and, th- and that's Julian Alaphilippe. Well, the whole team is going to be pissed off about that, so yeah. they're all going to be motivated, and that's a great pick. Um, hey, thank you. I'm not going to knock it. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, a couple of comments and qu- questions. 
Yeah, quick. let's do it. Okay. Right quick. Uh, CJ writes in, I think Ineos are waiting for two consecutive days above 2,000 meters where Colombians seem to excel. Thoughts? I have plenty of thoughts on that. Um, we can't count out Ineos. I like to, I like to see their – I'd love to see their aggression today. Uh, they were together, but – they got to be, they're worried. They're not uh, full of confidence like they usually are at this time, this stage in the Tour de France. Uh, they're having some bad luck. You saw Karpats today had a technical. You saw um, Sivakov waiting for him, who was one of the strongest guys, if not the strongest guy in the Dauphiné. Things are not going perfect for them at the moment. We mm-hmm. can't count them out, but they're not going as, as well as they would had hoped for. That's for sure. And, they're, and the dominance of Jumbo Visma has got to be tough to deal with with them right now. I mean, they're dominating the mountain stages right now the sprint stages crosswinds uh, they have no weakness right now in my experience uh having done a few of these is that altitude is not it, 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 these stages they they start low even you look at tomorrow we're you know they're starting at basically sea level you might get up to altitude that's very different than doing an entire stage above 2000 meters and then finishing at 3000 meters or something you know, you're getting up at, at higher elevations for a very short period of time. I've, I'm, in my opinion, and based on my experience, it never really was a factor. The only place that it potentially felt like, oh, my God, it feels like we're at 20,000. Here, here in Aspen. Well, here in Aspen. <laughs> but Mont always held like a special uh, – that's like a twilight zone for uh, for altitude. But you never noticed altitude on the Tourmalet, on Alpe d'Huez, on the Galibier. I didn't. Uh, maybe Galibier. That, that you start to get – that's a long, long climb, and you get very high. But well, so, well, us, us mortals, I, I definitely felt the altitude. <laughs> yeah, I never. Uh, felt I don't it. know if I agree with that one, but uh, yeah, you are Lance Armstrong, <laughs> who's ninety-five years old. <laughs> uh, Vivian writes: Do you think disc brakes are leading to more crashes? No. You know, the faster stop, maybe. I don't know. I don't think so, George. I don't I think, think so. I think there would be. It was jitters and weather. Yeah. And lack of racing. Maybe. Lack of racing. Look, I was never um, a big disc brake advocate until I went to ride uh, the Classics or the Tour of Flanders with disc brake bike and instantly realized how much of a difference it is, how much later you can brake in, in these super technical, uh, narrow roads. It makes a huge difference. Uh, and then you throw in weather. Um, there's no reason not to have them, in my opinion. What else we got? Um, Last one. We kind of touched on this a little bit, but what are your thoughts on riders drafting behind team cars to get back into the peloton? Uh, it's it, it, they've done it for as that's many, from Grant. As many, yeah, for as many years as, as every team has had a, a car in in the caravan. That's that's been going on. I mean, that's what it, that's what we always did. Um, again, it's one of these things that if it's a rule and you want to enforce it. Remember, Demolan got docked a couple of years ago. It, you either enforce it or you don't, and it's a blanket policy. It's not uh, depending on the day of the week or depending on the commissar, or depending on the circumstances. You know, I, it, one guy alone off the back of a peloton of two hundred guys, and if you just move the cars out, he's never coming back. Never coming back. I mean, I don't care who you are. They mm-hmm. usually do. They they have a head commissar in the back in the back uh, the front of the caravan, who usually makes the, the the right call. If you see if you see riders getting split because of wind or because of climbs or because of the difficultness of the course. Then yes, you make a barrage, which is stopping the cars, and they should technically not be able to come back with the car's help. But if they're just rolling along and there's a technical, a crash, mm-hmm. then the cars should not be stopped, and they usually do a good job in making those calls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, that was from Grant in Texas. I mean, yeah, in Texas. And then maybe one, a couple more comments. Uh, Sean writes, "I laughed out loud more times in this episode than ever." keep up the great content which one was that yesterday's yesterday's show george, george was very happy about yesterday's show <laughs> and Bij- benjamin writes i love your show great stuff very funny congrats to you all from france i'm listening to you every morning in front of my computer while i'm working at home love it i love hearing that and i love hearing from the riders right now on the tour and some of the directors that are reaching out to us uh, personally and telling us how much they like the show and we very much appreciate hearing from you guys so and thank another you. one of these top teams we won't. Uh, you can choose to say them or not, but the, the, their whole team that's not at the tour is at a training camp, yeah. and the whole team is listening to the move. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, that is so dope. Yeah, that made my morning. That made my morning. Yeah. And you were so cranky this morning. I was so cranky. I was happy to bring a smile to your face this morning. <laughs> I could not get out. I couldn't get my head off the pillow. I had to actually I had well, to like, I had to forklift it 
with my hand. I did come in. I did come to the house at the normal time. You know, seven thirty is. No light was on. The doors were locked. So I had to go back, back home and wait till you woke <laughs> up and watch the race on my own. Yeah. That was yeah. a rough day for rough day for you yesterday and and yesterday evening. What apparently. are you what are you queuing? I just yeah. was gonna see how long you were gonna go on. <laughs> see if he needed more enhancement. We need to get this guy a massage and start using our products here. We need you better by tomorrow. There once was a man named Lance oh. Armstrong, known as the toughest man in the planet. Today is a different situation, <laughs> oh. y'all. Let's hope that he will come back to full strength. Did somebody write that for you? That was pretty amazing, actually. I got to give you that. That actually made, that was the best part of the show, It just felt good with the music. I mean, it it just kind of rolled off my lips. All right. We'll see you all tomorrow, and uh, we'll see who was right about uh, just how animated and how how big of a difference these last sort of climb and a half will make. Let's do it. Tomorrow's going to be a good one. Vamos. 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 Vamos.